are citing something using the MLA style, when you have a paper where you've used some material from an outside source, um, we have two components. Uh, the first component is the in-text citation. And what we want to do, our goal with the in-text citation, uh, is to let the reader know you've used some information from an outside source without tripping the reader up and bogging the reader down with a bunch of uh, information that gets in the way. So typically, our in-text citation, we're going to make a very brief mention of the source of the information. Um, so for example, say I'm going to quote from Henry Ford. And I might say something like, according to, and by the way, according to is one of the very most useful phrases when you are using outside sources. It's, this is sort of a flag here that tells the reader, ah, we've got something coming from another source. So I might say, according to Henry Ford, comma, quote, history is more or less bunk, close quote, parenthesis, number, period. Now, what we have here, if we're looking at these uh, particular features of this particular one, one is I've used quote marks. That's showing I'm using the exact words of the source. These are the exact words that Henry Ford said. So if I'm using the exact words, I put quote marks around it. And by the way, it's very, very important. When you are quoting material, don't just put quote marks at the beginning, but also put quote marks at the end so that you can show the reader this is where the quoted material ends. And here, I'm back to myself talking. So it's very important to remember that close quote as well as the opening quote uh, so that you don't confuse the reader. Now we say, what's this thing here in parentheses? That is our page number. And you will notice it's just the number. I don't have the abbreviation P or uh, the number sign or anything like that. That's because in MLA style, those who use MLA style know what the style is. And so they know that if it's a number in parentheses, it's the page number. Now, some other styles, it's something different in the page number. For example, the APA style, uh, the number in the parentheses is the year that the work was written. Uh, but for MLA style, that's a page number. Everybody knows it's a page number. Now, if you've got a really big, complicated sentence to where you can't get Henry Ford's name into the sentence um, and, and you need to cite the source, uh, you could put his name in the parentheses along with the page number. So I might have Ford 27. And so that would be, um, again, MLA style. People know uh, when we have a name here in the parentheses, that's the last name of the source. And again, the number is a page number. Now, if you're quoting from a website where there aren't page numbers, well, don't worry about it. If you don't have a page number, you don't have anything to put there. So, so don't even bother putting the parentheses with nothing in between. Uh, just leave it blank. Now, sometimes you may be quoting from something where you can't find a specific human being or beings as the authors. And if that's the case, what you want to look for is what's called a corporate author. Which is to say, typically, if you've got something from a website, the organization that runs the website counts as the author for the purposes of your work cited. So for example, if I went online and got some statistics from the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, then I might have as my citation, again, keep it brief. We don't want to interrupt the reader. Uh, and just a short form of the name of the organization that counts as the author for the website. Now, 
This is what you do. I mentioned you use quote marks if you're using the exact words from the source. Now, if you're not using the exact words, but you're still using the idea coming from the source, you still have to give credit. Even if you've changed the words, even if you've paraphrased or summarized, um, you want to show that this work came from somebody. So, for example, I might say, Ford maintains, and maintains, by the way, is another really good word to use when you're showing that you're getting something from a source. So I might say, Ford maintains that studying history is relatively useless. And once again, I've got my page number reference. Now, what you'll see with this one is we aren't using the exact words that Henry Ford said, but we're still using his idea. And so we need to give credit to his idea. So we're still naming him. Now, you'll notice a couple of things going on here. Of course, I already mentioned no quote marks because it's not the exact words. You'll also notice something else here. I've used just the last name. That's because when you've quoted somebody once, you quote the person using the full name the first time. Once you've quoted that person another time, you only need the last name. Uh, on a second or later reference. And again, the reason is to keep it efficient, to not trip up the reader, because you've already mentioned Henry Ford once. Whenever you say Ford, the reader now knows it's Henry Ford. And so you don't need to mention his first name anymore um, unless you happen to have more than one source with the same last name. So for example, if you were quoting Henry Ford and then you were t quoting something else from Gerald Ford, then you would have to distinguish which Ford is which. Uh, but normally, once you've mentioned somebody once, you only need to mention that person's last name uh, from then on.